everybody. My name is Michelle and this is episode five, I think, of the Owl and the Oak Tree Knitting Podcast. You can find me mostly on Instagram and Ravelry as Michelle Owls. And thank you for taking some time in your day to hang out with me. I have a lot to talk about today, so let's get started. Uh, let's start with what I'm wearing. This is Morning Mist, and I knit this out of Knit Picks, the linen and cotton blend, I forget, Cotlin, and I don't remember the colorway, but it's probably on my project page, and here's the back of it, knit in the same yarn, and it's one of my favorite tops. I've knit, I knit one for my sister, and here in a second, I'll um, kind of talk to you about how I'm basically knitting the same top, but changing the lace panel here in a minute. But I'm getting ahead of myself. And I want to, I had a giveaway for having um, over a thousand viewers or followers on Instagram and over a hundred subscribers, which now I think it's almost to 300. So, wow, thanks guys. Um, and I'll, I'm going to show you what that was, and I'll announce the winner. It was a skein of the Fawn in the Fox. She's on Etsy. And this is the Let's Stay Home colorway. And then this little Notions pouch, which I filled. I put all this stuff in it. And it was a stitch marker that I got from Ryan Beck. A... The Gnome Knitter Progress Keeper. A bar of soap. Pink peppermint from Tufted Woolens. And some teas. Okay, and in that um, thread, there were 50 entries. 49, not including what I wrote. So I used the random number generator, and it came up with number 32, who is Hopeful Me. Her first name's Hope, and she's from Michigan, so congratulations, Hope. Um, PM me on Ravelry with your address, and I will send that to you. Yay! Um, okay, so what's next? Now we're going to go to finished objects. Okay. So I finished my son's cardigan. This was out of that Ella Ray gray suit classic worsted yarn haven't put the buttons on it yet but here is the buttons that I have and these were just in my button stash I can't believe I had enough I thought there was five buttonholes but there's only four right one two three four yeah and honestly the length is perfect but the whip is a little too skinny. I thought I was doing a good job, but he tried it on and um, I think he'll just wear it open. But I did a kind of like a mashup here. Um, Jane Richmond's classic pullover pattern for a lady, <laughs> but I didn't close it up. And then I used about a little bit smaller than the 30 inch. So I must have missed some increases. Whatever, it's fine. And then the shawl color I used from um, Little Wave by Gudrun Johnston. So there you go. One Christmas present done. <laughs> and um, my next finished object is a, this hat is... Um, I don't know what to say. This is pink graffiti, but her pattern is it's brioche where I just did the um, broken rib pattern. And um, this is also for Oakland. So is the sweater. And um, this is Madeline Tosh vintage in the chamomile colorway. I still need to put a pom-pom on it, but I kind of want to give it a good wash 
before I do that. And what I do with my pom-poms is I don't sew it in. I put the, the ends in and kind of just tie it like a shoestring tie with the bow so I can untie it out so I can wash the head again. So there's that one. But I love this pattern. I haven't done it brioche style yet, but um, I've, this is my third, my third one. And I'm going to show you the other ones I've done. This is one I've made for myself. It's lost its pom-pom thanks to my kids. This is like an El Rey, I think the lace merino, and I don't know the color we named. And then this top bit was um, Miss Babs. This is the example of um, last time I showed you, I think I showed you, the different Miss Babs, the batshit crazy color. <laughs> This is the one I love. Perfect colors for me, but I still can't find another one like it. But um, this on top, and this matches some fingerless mitts that I've knit for myself. And then I did this one in a bulkier weight, and this is O Loops. Don't remember the color we named, but it should be on my project page, which is some, I think this is um, Cascade 220. And then this little pom-pom, some lopey that I have in my stash. So I love this pattern. I like the way the hat fits. Um, so yeah, here's those. Now we're going to do some whips. Let's see what I want to show you first. Um, here is this bag. It's from Amy Beth the Fat Squirrel. And, and this is the... Go Team Go hat, which I actually have it printed off, which is a rarity for me, but I can show you. It's black and white, but it's that hat, and I'm knitting one, two of them for my kids for their the school that they go to. Hopefully I can get them done for Christmas, but it's in this gold color and this um, maroon color. And then the lettering is going to be in this color. This I had in my stash. This is just a Naked Skin Space Cadet um, yarn. And then these two is just Cascade Heritage Silk that I got from where I work. And it's very, not very much. I don't know. Four rows <laughs> on the first one. So we'll see how it goes. Fingering weight. Hat. I don't know if I'll get them both done by Christmas, but I'm going to try. So there's that. Let me put the pattern back in there. Oh, and I'm knitting. So far, I'm knitting them on the Haya Haya 16 inch. But I must say that um, my stitches are kind of really tight going around so I might just switch it to magic loop and I kind of like to knit magic loop these little needles hurt my wrists and if it's a fingering weight hat it it might be better for me to knit them magic loop since it might take a while um next okay and because I've stolen these needles to work on the lace panel of the top I haven't shown you yet I've taken them off. This is um, knitting on, I'm using the Haya Haya Sharps, the US4. But this is out of the Woolen Vine Yarns and the Moon Custer colorway in the Volca Base. And this is uh, Rochambeau Cowlette by Karina Spencer. Here's the yarn in the cake. I love it. And this is what I have so far. I'm just starting the lace. And what I like to do is put lots of stitch markers on it because I never know when I'm going to need to stop knitting. And it's just easier for me to count instead of going all the way back to the beginning. Even though, I mean, I can read my knitting. It's just easier. But this is what it's looking like knit up. And I still have... My little Halloween cupcake on there from the Gnome Knitter. But I really love this. It's really, really pretty. 
really, really soft. But this has been put on a stand still because I'm working on other things. So there's that. Oh, and another fat squirrel bag. That and um, Candace from Pin Feathers and Pearls is hosting co-hosting with some. I don't know if it's one or two other um, podcasters, but um, it's the Socks and Space Cow, and so of course I had to join that knit along. Um, so I have my little um, doctors, all the doctors, little sock sack from or box bag from. Ashley from Nomadic Yarns and I caked up Junk Yarn Kemper Raybot on Instagram um, her Ray and that's the colorway name and it is on here's her tag I'm just all over the place here's her tag And this is on her Boss 2-ply sock, 80% Superwash Merino and 20% Nylon, 400 yards. I really like this cake. And I'm actually knitting these on a 2. I want to see how baggy I can get this sock. Because I kind of just want a nice little house sock. Let's see. So I've only done the cuff so far. Here's that side. This side looks a little bit different, more of the brown. And I have my little Jamie Dodger that's also from the Gnome Knitter. And that's just, I don't know if any everybody will get it, but uh, it reminds me of Doctor Who. <laughs> anyway, so um, I think I'm going to do the Blueberry Waffle Socks. I'll see how it goes when I maybe get to here and I'll look at it and see if I like it. If I don't, then I'll rip it back and do something else. But so far I'm really enjoying this. Hopefully it won't be crazy baggy, but I kind of just want a slouchy sock. Why? I don't know. It's just coming into my head. And then I have this left from um, the bow ties are cool socks that I, I knit from Clary Fiber on Etsy for the cup or for the heel. And I'm gonna probably just do a heel flap. I think that's it kind of the thing. So there's that project. And that knit along doesn't end until December 31st. So I'm not too ru I don't know. I don't need to rush that one. These socks because I still have my other pairs of socks that I didn't bring to show because I really haven't knit on them. I've been knitting hat and the sweater and stuff. My next one, I really haven't gotten anywhere with yet. I did have about that much of the lace panel done. But I don't know what I did. I messed up. I tried to fix it. And I messed it up even more, so I just ripped it all out, and I'm going to knit it again. But this is the, what the lace panel is going to be. And here is the skein of yarn that's going to be the body. So kind of just like this, I'm going to make the lace panel this, and this is going to be the body. I have hopefully enough yarn for that. And then I'm going to use this for the... Um, this band and the sleeve bands and probably the um, band at the bottom. So this is, oh, this is, um, oh, loops, Eddie Cohen. And this is for the main challenge in November, which is the light and dark. Hopefully this works. I don't know. Um, and this is Cascade Yarns Longwood Sport, which is a yarn that we just got at the shop. So far, I like the way it's knitting. Kind of um, grabby. 
and splitty a little bit, but you know, that's okay. I don't know if I have, I do. Where's their tag? Yes, they, she has different names for their um, colorways or bases now, but this is the sport weight base. And I've had this forever, so I'm really happy I finally get to put it on the needles. Let's talk about one knitting plan, actually two. I didn't bring the yarn in with me, but um, it's basically this <laughs> in Madeline Tosh, but it's in the violin colorway, which is like a, it's not like a dark, dark brown, but it's a, a brownish tan brown. I don't have anything with me to show, to compare it to. Maybe like kind of like the door, like that color. But I'm going to knit my youngest a sweater. And I, because I kind of had um, width issues for Oakland sweater, even though I thought I measured, but whatever. Knitting was, it's okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about knitting the Gramps cardigan, I think it is by 10 can nets out of this. This is Longwood uh, worsted. And I've knit a shawl with this and I really, really like the way it feels. And my boss knit a sweater in this and um, when she washed it, it got really big. So she put it in the dryer and when I felt it, it was so, so soft. I was kind of shocked that it was the same yarn. So um, I think I might just purchase the Gramps cardigan um, pattern and knit him a sweater in it. So, okay, knit this, another hat, a top, two hats, two Go Team Go hats, two pairs of socks by Christmas? I don't think so, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> That's not, inc I mean, okay. This year I decided, I thought I decided, I do this every year, Christmas present knitting. It gets a little intense, but this year I just knit a, almost everybody a pair of socks for their birthdays. Oh, so I don't know. Is it expected? Do people start expecting the hand knit items for Christmas if you've knit them stuff before? I got a few more segments. Let's go with um, things that have come into my house. And I have um, Ask Me Anything segment. There was a lot of questions. Thank you for asking. And the, um, there was the Ask Me Anything thread and the giveaway thread. So here we go. I ordered this back at the beginning of September and I finally just got it. So I'm really happy to get it now. Um, this is Nitsomniac Designs and this is her um, He Who Walks Behind the Rose Twist and Shout, which is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 400 yards. I really, really love this colorway. Oh my gosh. Very pretty. And I also got this one, um, Children of the Candy Corn, which I was hoping was um, more orange, like the picture, but I know how it goes. Sometimes this doesn't come out right, I guess, out of the dye pot. I was hoping for more of that splashed around. I think it's just on the same base. Yep. And here's her label. And she also sent me some minis. And um, remember when I said I ordered some blacker yarn for that shawl by Annie Claire, the Isles, the Isle of Purebeck uh, shawl? Well, I got it, and I haven't opened it yet. I hope. Blah, blah, opened it yet 
because I wanted to show you how cute the packaging is. First, they brought me a little note. Oh my gosh. Then, they gave me this little pamphlet. And it talks about all the different kinds of yarns that they sell. Or breeds, I mean, I guess. And if I can get in touch with them, it says, the fiber we use is British. If you get in touch, we can tell where the fleece used in each batch of yarn was raised. Cool. This is, isn't that pretty? I just love it. I feel like this is a Christmas present. Should be a Christmas present. I probably should wait. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. Ah. <gasps> So this is the Blacker West Country Tweed, which is 100% pure new wool, made in Cornwall. I love it. Can you kind of see the little Tweedy specks? Kind of. There. Oh my gosh, you guys. See, now I want to cast this on. And I can't. <laughs> Not until after Christmas. So maybe I should just stuff this in the tree or something. I know. Is it bad to talk Christmas talk already? But I feel like when you're a maker, you're kind of already there because you have to make the stuff way in advance sometimes. Um... Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the Ask Me Anything. Here's the first question is um, by Tanya Marie, who is the Sampler Girl. She has a Sampler Girl podcast. How long have you been working at the yarn shop? I have been working there since January 2014, I think. I think. It's been two or three years. I think it's just 2014. Um, which is, let's see. Well, um, when my youngest was born, I used to work at a bank. I couldn't really find anything else around here. And um, so I had to quit because I had two very little kids. And so I stayed home. And when Lamekins was hiring I, that whole weekend I thought should I go for it can I do this will I be able to have somebody watch the kids and so I applied and I mostly just work weekends and um, sometimes I teach Monday nights Monday nights is our knit night so right now every other Monday I'm teaching the beginning sweater class from six to eight and sometimes I work both weekend days. Sometimes it's just one. Sometimes I don't work a weekend. It's um, pretty random, but I really love it. And I keep forgetting that I, I actually work at a yarn shop because for me, it's not really work. Um, yeah. So the next question is by um, TR Steve 57 Terry. Who taught you to knit and what projects do you want to accomplish in the future? I taught myself how to knit, thanks to YouTube. <laughs> I tried learning how to knit from books um, way before YouTube, um, and I just couldn't figure it out. I figured out the knit stitch, but couldn't figure out the purl stitch. And um, I don't know when I started watching YouTube videos, but it all, just a, all of a sudden just clicked, so I, I taught myself. Um, what do I want to accomplish in the future? Uh, more sweaters. This is going to be the upcoming year of the sweater for me. Um, I would really like to knit a color work sweater, which I have one in mind, but I can't remember the name of it. And I would also like to knit a color work sweater that's going to be turned into a cardigan. Is that going to happen this year? I don't know or 2017, I don't know, but I would really like um, for that to happen. <laughs> Let's see, and um, I can't even read my own writing. Feed, 
O-B, I don't know, Felicia. Sorry, I misspelled your Ravelry name, so I can't read it. What do you do at the yarn shop? What's my favorite things to teach? Well, um, there's a few things that we do. Of course, we do inventory, and we're constantly looking on Ravelry for new and upcoming patterns and ideas. What's happening, hopping in the knitting world, crochet world. Um, and of course we help people pick out yarns and pick out colors and um, hash out ideas. And sometimes it's just good to talk, you know, put all the yarn choices on the table, hash it out. Um, instead of, you know, trying to figure it out on your own, it's fun to see what other people say, what caught, you know, what catches their eye. Um, Lots, we answer lots of knitting questions. Classes I enjoy teaching, I think pretty much all of them. I get to choose majority of the time what pattern I want to focus on and teach. Um, like I really wanted, I felt like the Wanderers uh, Modern Mucklux was a really good beginner color work pattern. Um, I mean, it took two skeins of yarn. Um, so, and it didn't take very long to make. So, I felt like that was the gateway pattern to get into that. And, um, and, and then in the process, you know, I'm learning things too on how to teach these classes. Um, so, but I, I enjoy all of them. I teach, uh, we all teach beginning knitting. I teach beginning crochet appointment only because sometimes it's just easier for them to come in and pick a time that they want to learn and I just make sure I'm available for that time. Um, let's see, I'm doing the beginning sweater class, which is really fun. What other classes have I taught? We do, we do socks. Everybody can teach socks, so it doesn't. You don't have to um, be the only ones teaching that. But we do all kinds of classes there, and um, we knit samples for the shop, and that really helps sell yarn. And, and I mean, anytime you see a pattern, excuse me, in real life is is huge because. You can see it on Ravelry or Instagram or whatever, but when you see it in real life, it just kind of gives it, you know, you can see it better, I guess. Anyway, let's go to the next question. Let's see. Glitzer, Glitzer Kex. Sorry if I misspelled that or mispronounced that. Um, let's see. When do my kids like to wear and what are my go-to hand knits? Well, I really haven't knit much for my kids. Um, hats, of course. Um, I've made them a pair of, oh, I made Oakland. I didn't get to Owen's last year. It's poor Owen. I always knit things for Oakland, but never Owen. I don't know why. Um, that's going to change this year. <laughs> anyway, um, some felted mittens. So I'm going to make Owen oh, a pair of felted mittens, plus all that for Christmas. Um, hats. I made them sweaters once that just fit that ear. I was bummed. So I'm still really trying to figure out measurements for them. So we'll see when I start knitting Owen's cardigan if I can get it figured out. And what are my go-to hand nets? Oh, um, I have a pair of fingerless mitts that I wear all the time. I used to knit mittens, but I always took them off because I just can't function with mittens. So what I do now is I just um, make it make it fingerless mitts. The ones that can roll all the way up and cover um, so those, those are the kinds that I like to make. Um, sweaters, tops, <laughs> shawls. I only have, I think I have two shawls that I'm constantly wearing right now. And of course I didn't bring them down. 
I did bring down this one, or it's not a it's not a shawl, but it's one of my favorite um, cardigans that I wear. I wear it almost all the time. This is the Grace cardigan by Jane Richmond. It has this like little mesh panel at the top, and I think I wear it a lot because it it's a brown color that goes with everything. Um, not fun to knit because it is dark brown boring but I wear it all the time because it's a nice neutral and it goes with everything and this was a Malabrigo whatever the fingering weight is called I don't remember and I don't remember the colorway name but it I'm sure it is in on my project page but I wear this all the time and I'm thinking about knitting another one of these and um Oh, well, no, now I, I can't do that. Maybe I can. And the um, wool barn that I have, Pebble Beach colorway. I was going to use that for a different sweater. See, now I don't know. <laughs> but I definitely want to make another one of these cardigans. This is one of my favorites. Um, let's see. Um, Laura always knits. Laura asked if I was going to possibly host a knit along in the new year. I am. Thanks for asking. Um, it's going to be a knit along or a crochet along, and it's going to be Doctor Who themed, of course. Um, it's, uh, the new Doctor Who comes out on Christmas. I'm so excited for that. Um, so this is going to be. <laughs> pretty relaxed. I think I might just maybe do it for like a two month time period, but it could be Dr. Who themed yarn, um, Dr. Who themed pattern. Um, so yeah, um, I have, I've purchased one price so far for that, but I'm sure I'll, I'll figure out a few more things to get for that. But, and there'll be more details the closer we get to January. But yeah, so I am planning. I'm planning, I'm planning. And I think I'm going to do one more question this time because we're already at too long for what I want my podcast to be. Um, Nicole N C L S H L Y asks out of all your projects which is your favorite which pattern did you enjoy working on the most hmm well be, almost all of them are kind of my favorites um and i've enjoyed working on almost all of them well okay for right now <laughs> I really, really enjoyed working on those little pumpkin socks a lot. So there, there's that kind of, that answer. Now, if you would have asked me, you know, a few months ago, whatever I was working on probably was my favorite. But honestly, the little pumpkin socks and that yarn was a good, pretty good combo. And it's been a long time, if ever, that I felt that way about a pattern and the yarn together. Speaking of yarn, okay, you know that batshit crazy colorway that is this, but this is what I got. I was thinking I have this body part of this sweater done. Is this too wild and crazy or should I just keep going? Here's part of a sleeve. I mean, I think it looks okay, but I don't know. Will I wear it? That's the question. I think I might have made this sleeve a little too tight. But I have, I mean, I have two of it's the wows the skeins. This yarn feels amazing. 
Or should I just rip it all out and make rye socks by Tim Cannon? It's a card. It'll be a cardigan. And I was thinking of using like a navy um, shawl collar, like Little Waves shawl collar. I keep going back to that because I already own the pattern. I've knit the pattern and I really like the shawl construction. I wish that I would have made this one more inch though, because now that I look back at it, I would have been more happy with an extra inch. But I want your feedback on this because I really wanted it to look <laughs> like that, you know, fallish colors, but it doesn't. Is it too crazy and wild? I don't know. A few of you asked about or um, brought up volume issues. I'm going to try to play with that when I edit this. Hopefully I can figure it out. I don't know. We'll see. But um, I hope you guys have a great two weeks. And are you guys starting Christmas knitting? Have you started yet? Do you do Christmas knitting? I know some people don't do that. Um, I wasn't going to do that. But, you know, honestly, I'm just knitting for my kids, which I don't hardly do because I'm usually knitting um, for other people or, yeah. So... Um, this year or this holiday season's going to mostly be knitting for my kids. Um, yeah, so, um, there's the ask me anything thread in our group. So if you have any questions, um, leave them there. I still have a few questions that I wrote down, but we're already way over what I wanted to be. So, um, yeah, so I will see you guys in two weeks. Take care. Bye.